Hello everyone, and welcome to BioScholar. Let's talk about a fundamental concept in genetics, homologous chromosomes. But first, a quick refresher. Chromosomes are thread-like structures made of tightly coiled DNA and proteins. They become clearly visible during cell division. Each chromosome has distinct parts. The centromere is the constricted region that holds the chromosome together, and the telomeres are the protective caps at the ends of each chromosome. Now, chromosomes exist in pairs, and these are called homologous chromosomes. In every pair, one chromosome is inherited from the mother and the other from the father. What makes these pairs homologous is that they carry the same genes arranged in the same order along their length. However, here's the crucial part. While the genes are the same, the versions of those genes, known as alleles, may differ. For example, if one chromosome carries a gene for eye color at a certain location, its homologous partner will have the same gene in the same spot, but one may carry the allele for brown eyes, and the other for blue eyes. So, homologous chromosomes are similar, but not identical, and this subtle difference is key to the genetic variation we see in sexually reproducing organisms. Homologous chromosomes are found in every diploid cell. In humans, there are 23 pairs of chromosomes, that means 46 in total. Out of these, 22 pairs are called autosomal chromosomes. These are the chromosomes responsible for most of the body's structure and function, excluding sex determination. Each pair of autosomal chromosomes is homologous, meaning one comes from the mother, and the other from the father. They carry the same genes in the same order, though the versions of those genes might differ. The 23rd pair is known as the sex chromosomes. In females, this pair is XX, a homologous pair. But in males, it is XY, and these are not strictly homologous. Why? Because the X and Y chromosomes differ in size, structure, and gene content. However, they do share small matching regions, which allow them to pair up during meiosis for proper segregation. So while most chromosomes in a diploid cell are homologous, the X and Y chromosomes in males are a special case, partially homologous, but functionally distinct. During meiosis, each homologous chromosome replicates to form two identical sister chromatids. In a homologous pair, chromatids from the same chromosome are called sister chromatids, while those from the other homologous chromosome are non-sister chromatids. As meiosis progresses, homologous chromosomes pair up closely. At this stage, non-sister chromatids come in contact and may exchange segments of genetic material at specific points known as chiasmata. This exchange is called crossing over. As a result of crossing over, recombinant chromatids are formed. These contain a mix of genes from both parents. This process is a major source of genetic variation in sexually reproducing organisms including humans. The example I showed involves a single crossover, where two non-sister chromatids exchange genetic material at one point. However, crossing over can also occur at two points, resulting in a double crossover. During this process, segments of the chromosomes are exchanged at two different locations. This process is important in gene mapping because it allows us to determine the relative positions of genes on a chromosome. The occurrence of double crossovers can sometimes reverse the effects of a single crossover, providing more precise information about gene distances. Now, let's talk about gene mapping, a fascinating technique that scientists use to locate genes on a chromosome. Gene mapping is based on a simple idea. The closer two genes are on a chromosome, the less likely a crossover will occur between them. But if genes are far apart, the chances of crossing over between them increase. By studying how often certain traits are inherited together, scientists can calculate the distance between genes. This distance is measured in units called map units or centimorgans, where 1 cm represents a 1% chance of recombination between two genes. So, double crossovers, although rare, help fine-tune this mapping. When crossovers happen at two points, and we track which gene segments get exchanged, we can draw a much more accurate genetic map. Gene maps have become powerful tools in genetics, 
helping identify genes linked to diseases, understanding inheritance patterns, and even assisting in genetic engineering and genome sequencing. In short, thanks to crossing over and recombination, we don't just know what genes are, we know where they are. As you all know, chromosomes carry genetic information in the form of genes. These genes are the basic units of heredity in humans. But here's something important. For each trait, humans don't just have one fixed gene. Instead, we have different versions of that gene, and these versions are called alleles. Let's take eye color as an example. The gene responsible for eye color can exist in two common forms. One version, represented by a capital B, codes for brown eyes. The other version, a lowercase b, codes for blue eyes. Now, from the pair of alleles we inherit, one from each parent, one is usually dominant, and the other may be recessive. A dominant allele has the power to mask the effect of the recessive one. So, if someone inherits either this combination or this combination, the dominant B ensures they have brown eyes. But if they inherit two recessive alleles, only then will they have blue eyes. Genes are located at specific positions on chromosomes. Each position is called a locus. Now here's something interesting. When two genes lie very close to each other on the same chromosome, they are usually inherited together during meiosis. This is because the chances of a crossover event separating him are very low. This phenomenon is known as linkage, and the genes involved are called linked genes. For example, the genes responsible for red hair and fair skin are located close together on chromosome number 16. So, during crossing over, these two genes are often exchanged as a unit, meaning they tend to be inherited together. That's why people with red hair often also have fair skin. It's not coincidence, it's gene linkage at work. To summarize, homologous chromosomes are pairs of chromosomes found in every diploid cell. In humans, there are 22 pairs of homologous autosomes. Each pair carries the same genes in the same order but may have different versions, or alleles. During meiosis, these chromosomes replicate and form sister chromatids. Crossing over occurs between the non-sister chromatids of homologous chromosomes, where they exchange genetic material. The X-shaped structure formed during this exchange is called a chiasmata. If the crossing over happens at one point, it's called a single crossover. If it occurs at two points, it's known as a double crossover, a key event used in gene mapping. Genes located close to each other on a chromosome tend to be inherited together. This phenomenon is called linkage, and such genes are called linked genes. Gene mapping uses the frequency of crossing over between genes to determine their relative positions on a chromosome. The distance between genes is measured in centimorgans, where 1 cm equals 1% chance of recombination. Genes are the units of heredity. Each gene can have multiple versions known as alleles, one may be dominant and the other recessive. The specific position of a gene on a chromosome is called its locus. Using gene mapping, scientists can determine the location of genes, understand genetic disorders, and trace inheritance patterns across generations. That's it for today's episode on chromosomes. If you have any questions, drop them in the comments below. I'd love to hear from you. And if you're curious to explore more about chromosomes, click on this video right here. See you in the next one.